Hello, Hyperpoggers. So this is the most ambitious video I've done in a while. I've really put my everything into making this video as f***ing dope and comprehensive as I possibly can. Cloud rap, it's the most beautiful and ambient type of rap music you will ever hear. The whole cloud rap wave really started in Sweden with Sad Boys and Drain Gang, but there are artists all over the world who use similar production techniques to make these big, expansive, and evolving beats that define the cloud rap sound. I think a lot of the reason this sound is centered in Sweden is just the really rich history of pop music production in that country. From ABBA to modern icons of pop production like Avicii and Max Martin, there's no denying the deep history of pop music production in Sweden. I mean shit, even Swedish metal groups like In Flames and Opeth are iconic because they break the conventions of the metal genre and create rich melodic textures in the arrangement and production. When it comes to cloud rap, it's not about making the biggest pop song, but it is about taking all the creative elements of pop production and using them to create something truly beautiful. Beautiful. So the most iconic artists in the cloud rap genre like Young Lean, Echo 2K, Blade, and Tie Boy Digital all have built something truly special and unique that really spawns out of pop aesthetics, early internet culture, and rap music. Also, the producers at the center of the scene like White Armor, Mecha Talk, Young Good, and Young Sherman all deserve their flowers as well. While Sweden is really the center of the cloud rap scene, especially regarding the pop music influences on the sound, we can't neglect to mention the deep roots this genre has in early internet era rap music and the many artists all over the world who have continued to push the limits of the cloud rap sound. From the early influence of artists like 3-6 Mafia, Soldier Boy, and the entire southern hip-hop scene, cloud rap's visual and sonic aesthetics are shaped by the internet and ultimately a global music community. While artists like Young Lean and Echo 2K have defined the cloud rap sound in Europe, over in the US a whole other wave of artists has defined the cloud rap sound as well. Lil B and ASAP Rocky are probably the most well-known artists in the US that have exposed elements of cloud rap production and songwriting to a wider audience. Along with the legendary super producer Clams Casino and multiple mainstream artists who have been influenced by cloud rap aesthetics like Kid Cudi, Mac Miller, Future, Lil Uzi Vert, and Playboy Cardi, the line between rap and cloud rap is even further blurred. The production techniques and cultural impact of cloud rap have been so influential that you really can see that influence everywhere in the music industry today. Also, it's worth mentioning the deep resonance between cloud rap and the entire emo rap genre. Artists and producers like Lil Peep, XXXTentacion, Bones, Trippy Red, Xavier Wolf, Suicide Boys, and Smoke a Sack all have clear similarities to cloud rap. As you can probably see, cloud rap is a monolith. There's no real way to even try and gatekeep this genre because its influence is so diverse and wide reaching. But if everything is cloud rap influenced, then what even is cloud rap really? I guess if I really had to try and put a definition on the cloud rap sound, it would be sounds characterized by production and engineering techniques that basically make you feel like you're floating in the f***ing clouds. It's really that simple. So to help bring your production into the f***ing stratosphere, I put together this list of seven tips for beautiful and haunting cloud rap melodies. Apply these techniques to your beats and songs to feel the magic of flying through a wondrous sonic ether. Call me Lewis Carroll because we're about to go down the rabbit hole. Now let's dive in. One of the best ways you can create emotional tension and depth in your cloud rap beats is to leverage complementary scales that allow you to create layers of both joy and melancholy in your harmonies at the same time. Allow me to explain. So you're probably familiar with major and minor scales. Generally, major scales are going to have a brighter or even happier sound. Minor scales are going to have a more melancholy and sad character. As you probably know, there are only 12 distinct tones in Western music. These are A, B, C, D, E, F and G, as well as all of the sharps and flats. Every major and minor scale is made up of 8 out of these 12 notes repeating up and down the piano. I know this is pretty basic music theory here, but I also don't want to rush through it. Hopefully you're following along. I just want to make this accessible to beginners while still being informative for the advanced. So basically we have major and minor chords. Now this is where the magic really happens. This diagram is known as the circle of fifths. You might already know about the circle of fifths, but what you probably don't know is that you can also use it to turn your brother Alphonse into an automaton suit of armor. Okay, but for real, this thing is pure fucking gold though. This diagram allows you to seamlessly blend together different scales. There are a lot of different little tricks that you can do with the circle of fifths, but what I really want to draw your attention to here is the relationship between major and minor scales. If you look at the outer ring, you can see all 12 major scales. On the inner ring, you can see all 12 minor scales. 
Now, what's really special here is that every single major scale has a complementary minor scale that it shares notes with and vice versa. So for example, the scale C major is complementary and shares the same notes with A minor. G major is complementary with and shares the same notes with E minor. And D major is complementary with and shares the same notes with B minor. You get the point. For me, this is the bread and butter of writing chords and melodies. Well, actually I'm a vegan, so I guess um, it's the vegan bread and margarine. While these complementary scales are really all going to have the same notes, and some of you are probably already typing a five paragraph essay in the comments about how they're the same notes and Andrew, you're a fucking idiot. This is actually practically really helpful for creating tension between the major and minor sound in your production. I honestly don't even just use this technique in cloud rap. I use it pretty much everywhere. So maybe the best way to explain this idea of minor chords, major melodies is with an example. Let's say I start writing a chord progression in the key of E minor. I'm likely going to follow a pretty standard chord progression like 1, 6, 7. This is going to be a minor key chord progression. The chords are going to be pretty f***ing sad, okay? Now, to create some interesting counterpoint with that darker chord progression, I'm going to switch into the complementary scale of G major. While these are all technically the same notes, it's sort of a psychological and theoretical trick that will cause me to write a brighter, more poppy melody on top of the minor key chord progression. The reason this works is because naturally you're going to be inclined to play around the root and scale degrees of whatever key you're playing in. So instead of using E as the root for my melody, I'll end up composing in the key of G major around the root note of G. But go ahead, write that mean ass five paragraph essay about how I'm wrong anyway. Seriously, you've got to try this technique of writing minor key chords and then a complementary major key melody for yourself. Once you do, I can guarantee you will fall in love with the technique. For bonus points, try major key chords and minor key melodies as well. Okay. How do you get that big expansive sound that just fills up the entire space around you when listening to cloud rap? A lot of the tips and techniques we're going to talk about in this tutorial will help you create that depth and expansiveness in your tracks. But for this tip, I really wanna focus on what is the most valuable technique for creating that space. Now, this is maybe just way too obvious, but reverb and delay are your best friends when it comes to creating space in your mix but it's important to make sure that you're getting the most out of these powerful tools. So as much as it can be easy to just simply drop reverb on your melodies and call it a day, I want to encourage you to start applying send and return channels to your reverbs and delays as well. This will give you way more control over what you can do with these effects. By putting your reverb and delay on return channels, you are able to have all of your instruments share the same reverb unit, which creates the impression of all the instruments being glued together in the same space. While sometimes you wanna use reverb and delay to shape the character of just one specific sound when producing cloud wrap, the send in return technique is a powerful way to create cohesiveness in your mix and ultimately create a larger and more impressive sound. Also, using this technique will give you the ability to mix reverb and delay as separate instruments. This means you can EQ and compress the return signals of these effects or even do crazy effects like glitches and stutters. It's also worth getting familiar with your reverb and delay plugins and learning which sounds you like the most inside of them. For example, I have some regular presets I go to inside of Valhalla Supermassive and Waves H Delay because I know they tend to fit the vibes of my production. Developing your own technique for applying reverb and delay is one of the best ways you can start to really establish your own sound as a producer. In the same vein as reverb and delay are a variety of other creative effects that can help you make your music more expansive. The most common of these are effects like chorus, phasers, and flangers. You should also find other plugins that help you create more space and intrigue in your arrangements as well. For me, some of my favorite plugins for creating interesting spatial textures are Waves Enigma, Brower Motion, and RC20. Cloud rap beats are like ogres. They both have layers. If you really want to have interesting beats, you need to take your time getting the harmonics right. Don't settle for simple chords. Add layers on layers, transitions in the composition, and unique moments throughout the song. There are many ways you can add harmonic flavor. From simply taking your time experimenting with different chord variations to creative effects like saturation and distortion that add harmonics into the mix. At a physical level, all the different forms of music are really just different combinations of harmonics. The more you learn how to use your instruments and engineering tools, the more you will be able to bend those harmonics to your will. If you want to add more harmonic flavor into your mixes, it is necessary to get familiar with all the techniques at your disposal. At the same time, always consider that shaping the harmonic flavor of your music isn't just about adding more and more sounds. Sometimes, less is more. But when working with less, it becomes all the more important that you are carefully shaping those harmonics. The tip here isn't so much apply this neat little trick, it's more so a frame of reference for thinking about music. When you're working on music, always have the question of what you can do to add flavor to the harmonics in the back of your head. 
So far, we've mostly been considering technical aspects of music production, but it's also important to consider the emotional, psycho-spiritual aspect of your work as a producer as well. When working on music, I tend to find it's best to really try and let myself enter into the music as much as possible. While understanding the science and theory of music is incredibly valuable, what really separates professional musicians is the ability to enter into the music and inhabit it emotionally. For example, consider a concert pianist. They will spend countless hours deciphering and memorizing sheet music. Eventually though, the repertoire becomes second nature. Once the second nature takes over, there's no longer any need to think of the technical aspects of the music. At that point, the entire performance of the music is based on emotion. Constantly work to learn new techniques and push yourself technically as a producer, but never forget the subtle art of inhabiting the music emotionally. While it can be compelling to break music down to tips and tricks in physics, at the end of the day, this is a form of artistic expression. Bring both the art and science of music production and your service in creating the dreamscapes of cloud rap. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. The sounds you use when producing are often going to have just as much of an impact as the notes you play. When I first started producing, it was easy to just grab a synth patch and run with it. Often, I'd try and go for some crazy sound that nobody had ever heard before. While it can be incredibly rewarding to effectively create a truly novel sound, I want to encourage you to not neglect the power of simplicity as well. Many of the best sounds in cloud rap are nothing more than ultra simple patches. A saw wave with a bit of reverb, a fat sine wave with some chorus for a sub bass a triangle flute. These types of simple sounds really have such a focused character that makes them super practical when producing. The more you learn to work with simple sounds, the more you will be able to effectively implement complex sounds when it's called for. So here's my simple sound selection secret. When you're flipping through patches, have an idea for the kind of sound you're looking for first. While it can be fun to flip through a synth looking for some random crazy patch, it is really beneficial to have an idea of what you're looking for before you go in. For example, I might just be looking for a simple texture synth or a pluck. If you know how to do sound design, that's even better. Again, it really comes down to knowing your tools. If you know the kind of sound you're looking for, it's just a matter of figuring out where you can pull that sound from or how you can create it from scratch. Of course, this isn't some rule that you have to follow. It's just a simple trick that can be really helpful. Also, if you're looking for a good collection of those really focused and simple yet sweet synth patches that are perfect for cloud wrap production, I absolutely recommend my 8-fold serum bank. Another great trick is to apply the same principle to selecting loops. When I think about an idea for a beat I want to make, I often think about the different sample makers I work with and who might have a perfect loop or drum samples for that beat. Basically, the general idea of the sound selection secret is to approach the entire process of selecting sounds for your music with intention. Have a clear idea of the sound you're looking for before you start adding to the mix. How do you keep your cloud rap beats interesting from the moment they start until the moment they end? The key is having a wide variety of arrangement hacks ready to go at your disposal. Sections, transitions, and automations are all excellent ways to add intrigue to your arrangements. Sections can be anything from traditional verses, choruses, bridges, and interludes to entire mid-beat switches. While sometimes cloud rap can have incredibly minimal arrangements that don't rely on many sections, I'm looking at you Echo 2K. Always have some concept behind your arrangement that you're going for. If the goal is to not follow a traditional verse chorus structure and instead rely on repetition, that's okay. Just be aware of it and never underestimate the power of a well-executed beat switch. Transitions are just as important as the sections themselves. You wanna make the transition between sections natural and impactful. There are literally endless ways you can transition between sections in a song. Constantly look for new and interesting ways to differentiate the sections and transitions in your beats. Also, it's worth mentioning automation along with this tip. Automating volume, filter sweeps, and effects is one of the best tools in your arsenal for creating stunning transitions and evolution in your production. There's a really special moment when writing any song where the song starts to take on a life of its own. At first, you're staring at a blank DAW screen, and then suddenly, before you know it, you have a whole song staring back at you. At that point, the song is alive. It's the job of the musician to work in service of that song. You are a part of the song. The song is a part of you as well. Yet, it has also taken on a life of its own. Once you have finally gone from idea to song, it is time to take a mental step back and listen for the pulse of the song. Where is the life? Where is the pulse? Feel the pulse of the beat and work to enhance that pulse. Cloud rap isn't necessarily the most rhythmic genre out there. This is a genre that relies on a lot of pads and big textures. Yet, this is why it's all the more important to feel the pulse and energy in the music and work to enhance that. All of the production techniques we've discussed today will help you enhance that pulse. But at the end of the day, music is something you have to feel. What you feel is the pulse of the beat. Learn how to work with that pulse. Now, I hope that these seven steps have really helped you get more clear, not just on how to make a cloud rap beat, but also how to formulate your own sound as a cloud rap producer. 
My goal with these videos is always to help you find your own sound. Even when we're talking about how to make a young lean type beat or how to make a blade type beat, it's all to help you develop your own sound. I really wanna hear your own tips and techniques in the comments as well. These are just some of my ideas that have helped me to grow as a producer and I wanted to share them with you. It would also mean the world to hear from you about what has helped you. Also, if you want some amazing sounds to use in your own cloud rap beats, I wanna to talk to you about three of my favorite packs over at andrewtheavatar.com. The Eightfold Serum Bank has all of my go-to sounds for making beautiful ethereal textures. Every week I go and visit the Japanese gardens near me and walk around in nature and meditate. With the Eightfold Serum Bank, I really tried to capture the feelings of peace and serenity I get when walking through those gardens. No kizzy, this pack has brought tears to my eyes multiple times when creating it. Also, if you want some really drained melodies, I worked with Lil Bird to put together the Drain Plug Pack. This pack is based off the Drain Gang sound and has tons of amazing loops to flip in your beats. Plus, it means we can collaborate on tracks, which is always super dope. Finally, the Sugar Rush Drum Kit is my custom drum pack with Geology. Every sound in this pack has been carefully made from scratch for high energy drums and cloud rap and hyper pop. I put my heart and soul into these packs and it means the world to be able to share that with you. Also, I wanna make it easy to get all these packs. So if you click the link in the description, you can get a discount on all these packs by picking them up together in the cloud rap bundle. Also use the code TWIZZY for an extra 10% off. Anyways, those are the seven tips for creating beautiful and haunting cloud rap melodies. Let me know down in the comments which tip was most helpful for you. Also, let me know what cloud rap artists you wanna see full tutorials and beat breakdowns for. Make sure to like this video, subscribe if you're a real drainer, and don't forget to pick up the cloud rap bundle. Thank you. I love you. As they say in the Fire Nation, stay flaming. I'll see you next time.